furnace safety is part of the operating procedures used in startup, routine operation, and shutdown of a furnace. We will emphasize some parts of furnace operating procedures that are there for the safety of you and fellow workers. For example, there are several blinds that must be removed to start up a furnace. But the sequence of pulling the pilot gas line blind and lighting the pilots before pulling the main burner gas line blind is done for safety. It is important to strictly follow a sequence as given unless you have an alternate listed in your procedure. This presentation will not give you details on operating procedures, but will highlight the procedures you must follow for safety. When you are told it is time to start up a furnace, what are some safety items to always observe? An excellent way to begin is to review the written startup procedure for the furnace found in your unit operating manual. Never assume it is the same as last time. Changes in equipment and procedures are one way of making our job safer and more effective. If there are no changes in the written procedure, the review will refresh your memory on details that can make the difference between a safe startup and an accident. And the review gives you an opportunity for talking over the job and sharing information on the safest procedures to follow. Also, each person will understand what the other will be doing. A clear understanding of the procedure and the part to be done by each employee is the safe way to begin an assignment. All of us wear some personal protective equipment for any job we do. It is required for our own safety and includes safety glasses, a safety hat, long sleeves, and gloves. In addition to regular protective equipment, you should always wear a face shield when looking into a firebox. Also, face shields should be worn when lighting a natural draft or induced draft furnace. Some forced draft furnaces also require use of face shields when lighting them. Ear protection is required near some furnaces where the noise level is high. Learn whether or not your work area requires the use of ear protection. If it does, wear it. It is a procedure designed especially to prevent hearing damage. Some furnaces may require the use of other protective equipment. Know your unit requirements and use the equipment needed to make your furnace operation safe for you. Taking shortcuts can be painful. Take time to use the proper protective equipment and follow all procedures for startup and operation of a furnace. Some procedures may even seem unnecessary to you, but they are not optional. They are in the procedures to prevent accidents. We will list some safety steps to follow before lighting a furnace. Verifying a flow through all the furnace tubes is essential before lighting the main burners of a furnace. A hot firebox will cause the tubes to rupture unless there is a flow through them. In multipass furnaces, check each pass for flow before firing a box and maintain a flow as long as the box is hot. Locate the snuffing steam manifolds and make certain the valves operate properly. Furnaces are provided with various automatic shutdown and alarm devices that are installed just for the safety of you and others. As an example, some furnaces have automatic cutoff valves in the fuel gas line activated by low fuel gas pressure or flow. Another example is an alarm that sounds with low or high pressure in the pilot gas system. A third example of safety instrumentation is a remote operated valve in the fuel gas line. It is used for a quick emergency shutdown. The furnaces in your area may have these or other kinds of safety instrumentation. Be certain you know what systems are provided. Test the systems as part of the startup procedure. Do not start up a furnace until the safety instrumentation has been tested. <coughs> this is what can happen if shutdown and lockout instrumentation does not operate properly. An example of improper operation would be a loss of flame from low fuel pressure and the automatic device failed to cut off the fuel flow. With return of fuel pressure, the fuel would fill the box and relight from the walls to cause an explosion like this one. 
Other safety procedures in preparation for a furnace startup include checking all fuel line valves to verify they are closed. This includes both the pilot gas and main fuel gas valves. And take a last look in a firebox for trash or spills and to verify the internals are in order. If the furnace has tubes with header plugs, be sure to put snuffing steam in the header box during the startup period. This reduces the possibility of explosive mixtures accumulating in the header boxes. Purging a firebox is a procedure that must be done immediately prior to lighting the pilots. Purging is done by pressuring the firebox with a flow of steam or air for a minimum of 15 minutes. Some furnaces require longer periods for purging. The dampers and air doors must all be open for proper purging. While purging is in progress, is a good time to pull the pilot gas blind. Immediately following firebox purging, the pilot burner should be lighted. The sequence of lighting pilots before the main fuel line blind is pulled is listed that way for safety. Using that sequence reduces the chances of forming an explosive mixture in the firebox. Lighting pilots requires the use of a torch. Be sure you use an approved type. Go near the burner you are to light before lighting your torch. Stand on the upwind side and out of direct line of the burner. Verify your furnace draft before opening the pilot fuel valve. Improper draft could cause a flame flashback through the burner peephole or air inlet. Draft can be verified by checking the gauge or placing a lighted torch near the air door and see if the flame is pulled toward the burner or placing a rag or paper near the air door and see if it is pulled toward the burner. Fuel valves should always be opened slowly to give even ignition. After the valve is open, check for leaks between the valve and the burner. If you use a wick type torch, there are two important safety precautions to remember. First, use kerosene or heavier for fuel to light the torch. The fuel initial boiling point should be 350 degrees Fahrenheit or higher. And second, always extinguish the torch in the receptacle. Beating it on the ground or stepping on it to extinguish it may cause the flame to spread. Now suppose the pilot failed to light. What would be your next move? Close the gas valve immediately. Then recheck your pilot fuel pressure and your procedure for lighting. Determine if the firebox needs repurging and do so if needed. Then try again to light the same pilot or another one. Any pilots that do not light should be pulled and cleaned so they will light before proceeding. After you have all the pilots burning, pull the main fuel line blind. The sequence of leaving the main fuel line blind in place until all pilots are burning is an important safety precaution to prevent leakage of main burner fuel into firebox while lighting pilots. When you pressure either the main burner fuel system or pilot fuel system, draining liquid from the knockout drum and air from the lines will ensure smoother lighting of the burners and prevent putting liquid fuel in the firebox. Always ignite a main burner from its pilot. Wear a face shield for lighting natural draft or induced draft furnaces. Also, some forced air furnaces require face shields for lighting main burners and stand out of line of the burner on the upwind side when lighting it. Open the gas valve slowly until the burner ignites. If the burner does not light immediately, close the valve, recheck to see that all pilots are burning, and try another burner. Purging of a firebox has been listed as the safe procedure prior to lighting a coal box, and purging should last a minimum of 15 minutes. Some situations require longer purging time. Purging is also required before relighting a furnace when the flame goes out for any reason on all the burners and pilots of a section of the furnace. 
When a flame-out occurs in a furnace, the main fuel line valve should be closed immediately if it does not close automatically. Then the fuel valve to each burner should be closed. After the burner fuel valves are closed, make a visual check of the pilots to see if all are still burning. If the pilots are out, close the pilot gas valves and re-purge the box before relighting them. If the pilots are burning, relight the burners one at a time from their pilot. You must not try to relight all the burners at the same time by reopening the main fuel line valve while the burner valves are open. Unit surveillance includes some procedures that are totally for safety. Wearing a face shield or combustion glasses for looking in peepholes is for your safety. It can protect your face from heat and your eyes from trash particles. Your severe protection, as required, is to protect your hearing from damage over a period of time. A visual check to assure that all pilots are burning is important to furnace safety. Also look around in the firebox for flame impingement, flame color, and hot spots on tubes. Look for leaks in fuel and process streamlines. Make corrections as soon as you see anything wrong. Avoid injury from a source of hot oil spills by thoroughly purging a liquid fuel burner with steam before pulling it. When shutting down a furnace with removable plugs in the return bends, it is important to keep the header boxes pressured with snuffing steam. This may prevent a fire in case a leak occurs around a plug. And on any furnace shutdown, the fuel line blind should be installed and steam put into the firebox as soon as the last burner fire is out. This is a must, regardless of the length of downtime planned for the furnace. On an emergency shutdown caused by a gas release in the area, close the stack damper and pressure the firebox with steam as quickly as possible to keep flammable gases away from the hot bricks in the furnace. Our discussion so far has aimed at safety procedures that are applicable to most all furnaces. Let's look now at some procedures more specifically aimed at safe operation of a forced draft furnace. It is called forced draft because the combustion air is supplied by fans blowing into the combustion area. This type furnace requires more instrumentation and shutdown systems to prevent the accumulation of fuel gas in the firebox if airflow is stopped or a flame-out occurs. Each forced draft furnace has instruments for that specific design. For safe operation, you need to know the location of the control instruments and how their action affects the furnace. For example, if a fan shuts down, you need to know what instruments are activated to compensate for the loss of the fan. You can then check to be sure the changes occur. Immediate response to furnace alarms can mean the difference between an accident and a safe working day. As a safety check prior to startup, all instrumentation controlling safety functions must be checked to see they are working properly. Never fire up a furnace until this is accomplished. Some shutdown devices can be checked on the run by simulating the conditions. Safe operations require this to be done as scheduled. Never underestimate the importance of safety items in furnace operations. Safety should be number one in your job. Always follow safe operating procedures, or your epitaph could be the same as our late good friend, Shortcut Joe. His epitaph reads, By overlooking safety, he went underground. <laughs>